Can the amount of muscle and fat that you have in your body change your appetite? And what happens if you lose weight? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name is Richie Kerwin and today we're going to talk about some of the ways that your body regulates its appetite and the important role that your muscle, body fat and even bone have in keeping you from getting hungry. Lots of people have tried to lose weight at some point in their lives and unfortunately some have tried and failed many times. It's really easy to assume that they might have been following the wrong diet or even worse to think that they weren't disciplined enough but the truth is Trying to lose weight is a battle against one of the most powerful adversaries we'll ever face, our own brains. You see, your brain is wired through billions of years of evolution to seek out food, no matter how much you might want to get ready for bikini season. I've spoken about some of the reasons in my video on why losing weight is so hard, so remember to check that out after this video. And if you're really interested, you could check out the book The Hungry Brain by Stefan Guiné, which goes into incredible detail on how our brain makes eating less a lot harder, especially in the modern world with 24 seven access to delicious calorie dense food. The fact that there are whole books written on this means that appetite control is a really complex topic that I couldn't hope to cover in just one video. But instead, I'm gonna talk about how changes in your level of muscle mass and body fat can cause changes in your appetite that might make dieting a whole lot harder. We'll also talk about how even your bones might have a whole role to play themselves in controlling how much you eat. First off, let's talk about body fat and the concept of the lipostat. Lipo comes from the Greek word for fat and stat, as in the word thermostat, something that helps us to maintain a constant state. So body fat produces a hormone called leptin. And more body fat you have, generally, the more leptin you produce. In healthy people, leptin actually causes us to eat less. It does this by affecting the hypothalamus, the part of the brain that helps to control appetite. When leptin was first discovered, there was actually a lot of excitement about it because people thought it might be possible to control appetite just by injecting people with leptin. Unfortunately, experiments trying to do just that never actually worked out in humans. But you might ask, what about people with a lot of body fat? Why doesn't leptin stop them from eating too much? That's one of the reasons appetite control is so complex. We know that in people with obesity, they have very high levels of leptin, but they also suffer from something called leptin resistance. This means their bodies have been exposed to high levels of leptin for so long that they've lost their sensitivity to it. It's kind of similar to how people become insulin resistant and don't react to insulin in the same way. On the other hand, if people lose a lot of body fat, or even if they just drop calories for a while, leptin levels can drop and this causes appetite to increase and we want to eat more. We also know that you can temporarily increase leptin by eating more, especially by eating carbohydrates, but it's a very short lived increase. So it doesn't really help someone who's trying a longer term, low calorie diet or trying to maintain weight loss. Another possible way our body can regulate our body weight, strangely enough, might be through our bones. So I wanna talk about one of the best research studies I've read in the past few years. The only problem with it is that it was done in mice, which might make you think that it doesn't apply to humans, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So in the original experiment, some researchers in Sweden surgically implanted tiny weights into some mice to artificially make them heavier. Over the course of about two weeks, the mice with the added weight lost weight from their body fat compared to mice that didn't have any weights added. That was an interesting finding by itself. So the researchers wanted to find out why it happened. Through a few different experiments, they found out that the mice with added weights were eating less. And they also found out that the reason they were eating less had nothing to do with leptin. But that wasn't enough for the researchers. So they did even more experiments and found out that the weight loss effect didn't happen in mice that were missing a specific type of bone cell called osteocytes. The researchers came up with the idea that the osteocytes in the mice's leg bones were able to detect changes in body weight. This means that when the scientists added the weights to the mice, the bone cells detected the extra weight and sent a signal to the mouse's brain, basically saying, hey, we feel we're too heavy right now, time to eat a little less and get the weight down. The research team call this weight control system the gravitostat because of the force of gravity is helping to control body weight. What's interesting is that in the modern world, a lot of people spend most of their life sitting down, which means bone cells in their legs don't get much opportunity to detect their body weight and might not be able to help them regulate appetite all that well. However, that's a very early theory at the moment and needs more evidence. So the scientists decided to try and see if they could do something similar in humans. What they did is they got a group of participants with obesity to walk around with weighted vests that were about 11% of their body weight, which means a 100 kilogram person would wear an 11 kilogram vest for eight hours a day for three weeks. 
What they found is that the participants in the weighted vests lost more body weight and body fat, but not muscle mass, compared to a control group with no weighted vests. The researchers think, but don't know just yet, that this weight loss may be due to reduced appetite and not due to burning more energy just walking around with the added weight. Now, these are just a couple of experiments, but it gives you an idea of how animal research can be used to design human research and give us an idea of another way our bodies are able to regulate our body weight. Finally, there's another way that our body might control our appetite through how much muscle we have. There's no official name for this, so I'm calling it the sarcostat from the Greek word sark, meaning flesh or muscle. So think of it like this. When people lose weight, they often lose a combination of body fat and muscle mass, unless they do plenty of resistance exercise to hold onto it. We've already mentioned that the loss of body fat leads to a drop in leptin that can increase appetite. Well, it turns out that the loss of muscle mass might have the same effect. When our level of muscle mass shrinks, we can see a change in certain hormones that are produced in our muscles. Firstly, the amount of ghrelin produced in our muscles goes up. Ghrelin is a hormone that acts on the hypothalamus in the brain to stimulate appetite and make us eat more. Secondly, Less muscle can lead to a decrease in a protein messenger called myostatin. Myostatin is a pretty well-known molecule because it actually stops muscle growth. And genetic mutants that don't produce myostatin are known to have huge muscles. Just Google myostatin mutant bull or mouse and you'll see some incredible photos. So when myostatin goes down, another molecule called insulin-like growth factor goes up. And this also affects the hypothalamus in the brain, increases appetite, and causes us to eat more. The possible reason for this is that our body is trying to maintain our muscle mass, and when it detects a sudden drop in muscle mass, it makes us eat more so that we can put on some weight and hopefully regain that lost muscle. The drop in myostatin would help with this extra muscle gain too. Could this mean that having more muscle is a good idea to reduce appetite? We honestly don't know because we need a lot more research to figure that out. So there you have three possible ways that different tissues in our body, our fat, our bones, and our muscle, can affect our appetite and cause changes in our body weight. Like I said earlier, there really are many more ways that our body regulates appetite and how much we eat, and they're all incredibly complex. With more research, we'll probably discover even more systems of appetite control. So what do you think? I know that was a more science-y, theoretical kind of look at appetite, but I hope you found it interesting. As always, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information. Thank you.